How's it going, doggy people? I hope you all are doing well. Today we're going to be going over another reaction video of Beckman's Dog Training. Uh, the title of this video is React to Cattle Dog Socialized in One Session, which I find to be very interesting, which is the reason why I chose this video, uh, because I specialize in reactivity. I've dealt with a lot of dogs, cattle dogs, uh, Dobermans, Bernies, Mountain Dogs, all sorts of dogs and, and breeds that are reactive, both dog and human reactive, um, dogs with bite histories, all that. Um, and I've never socialized, I've never planned to socialize, or uh, have I've never successfully gotten them socialized in one session. Does that mean that I'm bad and, and he's good, or, or he's bad and I'm good, or I don't know what I'm doing? I don't know. You can you can decide for yourself. Everything depends. So um, what I do want to point out is is using this as a learning opportunity to realize that the fast way, if you get them socialized, and I say that with quotation marks in one session, your dog isn't socialized. I'm sorry to say, but just because your dog, it worked out in one session, doesn't mean your dog is socialized. Socializing, in my opinion, is a lifelong journey that you continue to socialize your dog, not just with other animals or with people, but with different sights, sounds, smells, um, textures, you know, this brick here versus water versus grass versus fake grass and real grass being by different fences and palm trees and, and different areas and, and, you know, noises and things. And that's socializing, you know, to teaching your dog to accept different noises that might scare them or they might otherwise just totally ignore. So we're going to hear what he has to say and I'll, I'll let you know what I agree with, obviously, and what I don't agree with. You're about to see a video with a one-year-old cattle dog. This dog could not be with dogs. After about 40 minutes, he was playing with four dogs with no muzzle, no leash. The session's a bit crazy. You're gonna see some leash corrections. You're gonna see, he gets out of his collar twice because I use, all my clients, I use the, the equipment that they come with. He gets out of the collar twice, Prince overwhelms him a little bit, but slow is not always the best way. So I'm gonna stop it right there. And first thing I don't agree with is, well, first off, he lets you know what's going to happen so you don't, you're not surprised when it does happen. He's kind of using that as as a, uh, an excuse in a way, I don't know, where he says, you're going to see leash pops. You're going to see behavior that would otherwise make a lot of people cringe or worried for the sake of the animal's comfort. Um, but in the end, don't worry about that because we because of the end product, because of the, the, the dog is able to play with other dogs. Well, terrific. You looked out, you got lucky. Being lucky is not a training plan, in my opinion. You looked out, and the dog was probably just so physically tired that it didn't have any more energy to react. And, and it doesn't mean that just because he was able to seemingly play with other dogs, play put in quotation marks, doesn't mean the dog was actually happy or comfortable. And not every dog needs to be friends with other dogs, okay? I'm a big advocate for if your dog is an introvert, let them be an introvert. You know, my dog does not care to make friends with other dogs. Maybe one or two in his lifetime, but really he doesn't care. He loves people. He loves kids. He's fine. We don't go around other dogs a lot. And I don't care to because that's his personality. Could I have raised him differently? Sure. But even if you raise your dog to be the most friendly and socialize around other animals, it doesn't mean that they want to play with them. There are some times when a dog needs to be a bit overwhelmed so you can test them see what's really going on with the dog. So I immediately disagree with that. No dog or person should ever be overwhelmed unless it is their choosing to do so. If you want to flood yourself and choose to jump out of an airplane and you're afraid of heights, fine, that's one thing. But you are a human and you have the ability to understand the consequences of that. And you have the ability to change your mind and control that entire situation. A dog does not have that ability. All right. The slow way is the fast way. If you take the time it takes, it takes less time. Don't be lazy. Don't be in a hurry. Your dog is the one that pays for it. We helped to give this dog a life. He now has friends in about 40 minutes. That doesn't necessarily mean that he dogs. has friends. Yeah, just because he's playing with dogs. And he could. If he does, great. Terrific. It worked out this one time. But so many other people are going to try this and their dog is going to be attacked. Someone could be hurt. Someone could be killed. It's just dangerous, and this is not a training plan. This is luck. Okay, so here we have him. Dogs. He's going to get into a little mini fight with Prince. Okay, so we look at this dog's body language, which is, you know, a, a picture's worth a thousand words. First, we have him on a tight leash. This is no longer tight, but it was tight. We have tension. We have barrier. So a tight leash can lead to frustration. Barriers can also lead to frustration and reaction. Um, 
You see his hackles are up. His tail is very stiff. He's on his front feet on tiptoes. He's very nervous right now. Closed, short lips. We don't see the eyes, the whites of the eyes, but ears are forward. Everything is saying too much energy right now. This dog is over threshold. If you want to do it in a way that benefits the dog, you wouldn't allow him to be in this situation. And by the end of this video, he's going to be he moved off away. The Terrific. Leash, off the so now he's multiple. he has that stiff wag of a tail. I'm going to uh, play dogs. it and just watch so the tail. So you're going to see my process. It's stiff. It's very tall. There's a little bit of wiggle in the top, but he's very interested in this dog. This dog's just moving away. I would not start here. This dog is over threshold because you're not going to be able to get through the, to the dog. And if, for a dog who is reactive, um, I would start with this dog however far away they need to be to where they can see this dog out in the open or behind a fence or whatnot, there's no tension in the leash and I'm able to get this dog's attention. I will allow him to look at the other dog and if I call his name, say his name is Bobo. <laughs> I was just working with a dog's name whose name was Bobo. So say his name is Bobo, whatever this dog's name is. Um, you know, I can make a clicky noise, call his name. He looks at me, I bark, reward with a treat or something that he finds to be A plus value and I allow him to look again at the other dog. If he cannot look at me or he cannot break his, his gaze, then we're too close. We need to move further back and increase distance. Ow. And the point of this is so this dog's going to go mark. Um, so the reason why I do that with every client who has a reactive dog is because we build up the behavior that we want, that he can look at this dog without being so energetic and so overstimulated that he feels the need to bark at him or pull on the leash or go say hello or start a fight or whatever. Um, we start where he's showing none of those signs. We reinforce that behavior by rewarding it and continuing and practicing that. And over time we get closer and closer and closer and the dog has stopped reacting. So that behavior is no longer reinforced or practiced. And then the dog can say hello. If at any point he reacts again, we go back to training. We go back a few steps. We literally take we increase distance between the two dogs. So there's a lot of videos on my channel where you can see that I work with uh, a reactive dog, Zeus, um, and hopefully more reactive, you know, client videos in the future. But either way, you're not going to see me starting off with a dog this crazy because I don't want to start the dog there. I start the dog behind threshold, below threshold, whatever you want to say. Work in this video and you're going to see the whole process. It was an over an hour session. I cut this video down to 30 minutes. I took out all the boring parts. Okay, so for me, I would be very interested in the boring parts. Now, I understand where he's coming from. Everybody wants to see the before and after. They want to see that all the action and going on and everything's crazy. And that's why, you know, of course, people like me, I don't have a, you know, I wouldn't have a TV show or anything because it's not, you know, entertaining. You know, for me, the slow way is the fast way. So I would love to see his boring parts, what he thinks are boring. And that would probably be the better parts that you can learn from. Um or it might just be that he just he knows the dog is not reacting and that's not what what people want to see. But for me, I am for teaching. I'm not for entertainment. You see all the interesting parts, all the body language. He doesn't look too bad with Prince, right? You've seen a lot of dogs look more. This is actually, I don't agree with what he's saying that he doesn't look too bad. Yeah, he's not too bad. That's that's more than I would like to see. He's very stiff legged. His legs might be shaking a little bit. His tail is very high, arched over his body. His hackles are up. Um, here at the base, the, the tail is up, we call that piloerection. His ears are forward. This dog's just over here sniffing. This dog is way over threshold. And if I think this is the trainer, I thought this was the owner for a second, but um, the fact that he is the trainer and he sees this and he's allowing this, I would have walked him away and really been rewarding. I mean, could I allow him to sniff? Sure. But this, it only takes half a second for him to go from this to barking and trying to fight through the fence. So I would not start here. Of course, at this, this uh, gate, this fence, he doesn't look too bad, but he's going to get worse. Okay, I'm giving him a lot of leash, a lot of room to cruise. Look at his tail. Now he's starting to get worse. Prince yeah. isn't doing anything. This so he could have prevented this by as soon as you see that it's getting worse or it's bad enough, which it was in the very beginning, I would start moving him away because I don't want him to practice that behavior. Trainers like, sorry, trainers like this like to see the bad behavior so they can correct it. You get further with honey than you do vinegar by just waiting for the dog to make a mistake, which is not a mistake on the dog's part. He's being a dog. He's doing what he's learned how to do or what he in his head thinks is right for himself. He doesn't understand living in a human world. Um, 
by allowing them to make that mistake. And then they, we put the accountability on the dog. He puts accountability on the dog. It's the dog's job to, to, you know, learn by their own mistakes. When really it's the human's accountability. Humans need to be held accountable. We put this dog in this position. The owners have raised him to this point. I'm not saying that the owners are bad people. I'm not saying that they purposely raised him this way. I'm sure they tried very much so to raise him the opposite, but things happen. So I'm not saying this as, as it's a, a bad thing. Fault doesn't have to be a negative. It just means that for myself, when I make mistakes, I own up to it. I want to hold myself accountable. If Adonis, my Sheba, starts bolting out the car door, which he doesn't, but if he does, and he wants to go running in every direction, it's because, and if I get upset about that, it's my own fault because I have not, it's been building to a point where that behavior is now a conditioned response, where when I open the car door, he bolts out and he runs away um, with or without his leash. That would be just something that I would need to tell myself. And I do that. Okay, let me make sure that I work on this in a controlled environment. This has now become a habit of a behavior that I could have prevented if I were paying attention. So Adonis is just holding me accountable and keeping me honest. And hey, you know, you if you don't want me to run away or you don't want to get upset with me or you don't want me to just, you know, bulldoze you through the door, then we need to work on this. And I don't work with him in the sense that you're going to see this gentleman working with this dog. So Prince's house. Look at his quick body movements. He's excited. Of, like, he's really sniffing. Kind of he's overstimulated. He is, he is totally and completely unsocialized. Okay? He's not- I wouldn't necessarily say that. It, I don't know if this guy knows this dog's history, but without knowing this dog's history, I would not say that this dog is necessarily completely unsocialized. We can't say that without knowing the dog's full history. If he's a, a rescue, then we don't know that. If the owners got him from an eight-week-old puppy, then we may know that. But for now, we cannot just say things as if they are fact. I would say that he's very stimulated by the other dog. And I would say he's probably not as socialized as he could be. Or he's had, you know, he's just very excited when he sees another dog. And it may change with this barrier being gone because this oftentimes causes issues between two dogs. Not running away, though. He doesn't look terrible, though, but we're going to let Prince out. Well, he's not running away because... He was too interested. The The other dog on the other side of the fence is a draw for him. So he's not, I wouldn't expect him to run away, you know, unless maybe the other dog came out, then he may. We see this curved tongue here, really long lips held back. There's tension in them. There's wrinkles. This dog is very overstimulated. This is not a good sign. You know, only bad will come from this. This is, this is already too far. And so he's a quick trainer. He likes to make, you know, make quick progress with dogs so if you want to do it then by all means follow so, his method but i don't agree with I it i don't think do. it's safe in the long run put this video in the comments you're gonna see my dog is very you know panting work. and my method is essentially this desensitization coupled with consequences for an incorrect behavior coupled with pack corrections or okay so first off i'm going to stop him there dogs are not pack animals if you want to see and learn more about that, you can check out my video in, uh, in, in my, on my channel about why dogs are not pack animals. Um, these are all strangers. They are not a family unit. And even then, dogs are not that aggressive. Or I'm sorry, wolves are not that aggressive within their own family. Secondly, he thinks his method is all special and dandy. It's not. He just uses yank and crank methods. That's it. He uses compulsion. He pops the dog, whether it's on a regular collar, on a choke chain, on a head halter. That's how he does it. Yank and crank. Compulsion balanced, whatever you want to call it. He also makes the dog learn through corrections for mistakes in behavior or or unwanted behavior, whatever he said. It is his job to teach the dog the behavior he wants. And hopefully he could teach him using positive reinforcement, not just waiting for the dog to screw up and then correcting him. And the dog has to learn and question and ask a million questions to learn what the right behavior is. He makes, you know, you should make the right answer easy for a dog. They don't speak the same language. They don't understand why they have to walk nicely on leash. They don't understand why they have to sit when we tell them to sit. None of that makes sense to them. So to fault them for not understanding or not even thinking about that is just not necessary in my opinion. Corrections from another dog. That is So he talked about pack corrections from another dog. That would just be simply a correction from another dog, not a pack animal, not a pack. You get a bunch of strange dogs around. They are not a pack. A pack is a family unit. For them to be packs, they would have to have a breeding male and female that 
give birth to puppies, and those puppies are their children, and that is their family unit. Dogs are not pack animals. So this is already outdated information that he's spreading. I'm just trying to correct it. Okay, Going so here prince. we have the two dogs. Going prince. Okay, no. so he's over here. Let me actually go back, because I want to see if this dog... This dog looks like he has a little bit of slack. So he's choosing to stay here, I think. I don't think he... I think he could get over and bite the other dog if he wanted to, but he's choosing not to. It, the best way for... Going okay, no, never mind. So so he did have him hold him back a little bit, but when there was slack, this dog could have gone over and, and tried to snap at Prince, which he didn't. Um, you're going to see Prince, he has a very tall tail, which has been docked. Um, so it's kind of hard to, to see that he has a high tail. Prince. Prince is, no. I don't know if he is staring at this dog and holding eye contact, um, but he did give a shake off. So that to me would say that he's giving this dog a calming signal and saying, dude, chill out, relax, you know, relieving stress. Um, this dog just looks, you see the whale eyes, short lips, he's barking, he's crouched, uh, rounded top line. Um, he's nervous. He's very nervous. And I think this leash really doesn't help things. I mean, I get it for safety, but I wouldn't speed things up like this at all. I would start at a distance until this dog can look even calmer than this dog, you know, where he, he still has tension in his body. I would like both dogs to be calm and relaxed. The problem is right now, Prince... It, Prince yeah, should, so this I dog was... is backing up on his own. This dog is very unsure. I think he's, you know, of course, a lot of reactivity in animals is based off of fear. Look at these hackles. Look at that tail that's down. He is not sure about this dog, and this dog has his ears back. He's looking at him. He has long, you know, open mouth. He's like, dude, what, what is wrong with you? <laughs> like, chill. And this guy is just super unsure. So he's not being mean or bad or aggressive like that. He's just unsure, and he's nervous. Prince would continue to back him up, but Prince really... And I still think that they're working way too fast. Is like in play mode at this point. Yeah, he's yeah, definitely showing good. in play mode. Oh, now good. He's... Little back up there. He does it. I don't like the little backup that he says, oh, good, back up there. He's putting pressure on this dog, and this dog is backing away. Now, luckily, this dog was not necessarily cornered. He kind of got cornered, but he chose to move this way. I wouldn't start with that because this dog is nervous and I wouldn't want Prince to or, or any dog I'm working with to really is like in put more pressure on him. Him, him so he's but, putting pressure walking oh, down to him this dog is looking away he's doing avoidance behavior he's trying to get away from him so I would call this dog back so this dog doesn't feel the need to go from flight to fight low back up there he does it he's running away and now he goes. so I think this would be better if I'm going to introduce two dogs I want them both to be off leash or they're both going to be leashed and if they are leashed I want them to understand how to, you know, not freak out when they feel pressure on their body. Goes now. Prince is like just kind of messing with him. Prince is like running so around. Prince is sniffing. Of... They want to play. So lovely. So this dog tried to go around. He could have gotten away if he wasn't held on leash. So this guy's creating this whole issue. He's making the issue worse by keeping him on a leash and not letting him be as free as this dog. I mean, I understand you want safety, but it would be safer if he's going to be off leash and he's looking scary, or he, not scary. He's looking fearful because he is scared. He's not scary. If he had room to get away and play, this is how a lot of dogs get into a fight while they're on leash. Because this guy's going to try and play. He gets corrected by the leash and he thinks this dog did it, or he gets frustrated because the leash did that to him. He's being held back by tension. He can't play. He gets frustrated and takes it out on this dog or vice versa. Doing his thing. Oh, but so I correct him right there. Unnecessarily correcting this dog. He pulled up on him. He slipped out of his collar. And then he's like kneeing him and cornering him when it was his own fault that he put them in this situation in the first place. So why is he correcting this dog for his own lack of preparation? There was a low go at Prince I didn't like. Gets out of his collar again. I tightened it up the first time. I didn't tighten it up enough. Plus, he's so rehearsed. here now. He's over here, and his tail is tucked. He's shaking. He is round top line. He is fearful of this person and the other animal. So he's caged in here. He's trapped. He's cornered. This is a very dangerous situation. I would not have, you know, I would have ended it there. I would not have, honestly, I would have let go of the dog's leash as soon as he went to go run behind Prince because I didn't think of it. I didn't see it as, you know, he was making a go at Prince. We'll go back. I see it as he wanted to run behind him and play, and he got freaked out because the leash play was tight. At this point. <laughs> so let's watch him. Oh, good. Low back He's up trying there. to he escape. Does escape doesn't work. Prince turns his back. He comes back behind him. And now he goes. Now Prince is like just kind of messing with him. Prince is like running around, kind of. Okay, so he went around behind Prince. Now, whether he would have nipped at him or not, if the leash was not there, he might have gone behind. He may not have made 
contact, but because the leash was there, that really didn't help. So this guy drags this dog, yanks him over here. Again, human fault. Human caused this. Do and he corrects saying. him, and he knees oh, him, and he I gets all him, big I... and tough and scary. And look at this poor little thing. Then he's also cornered by this dog. So this is just not good. I don't agree with this. It, this is very dangerous. You're not socializing the dog. Right there. There was a little goat prince I didn't like. Gets out of his collar again. I tightened it up the first time. I didn't tighten it up enough. Plus, he's rehearsed getting out of collar. When dogs get out of collars, they know how to do it. They... That's why you should use a martingale. A martingale is a collar used specifically for dogs that know how to back out of collars, or you could use a harness. Martingales are, you know, a cloth collar with extra slack in it. So when the dog is is just chilling, it's nice and loose. And if they try to back out, it kind of tightens only a couple of inches. Um, if you look them up, martingale, um, they're often used with greyhounds. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stop this part here before the video gets too much longer, and we will continue in part two. So stay tuned for that.